there! Welcome to Westside Community Church Online, where we're a spiritual hub for a great community. And thanks so much for joining us today. The video you just watched was an introduction to our Alpha course. It's starting up on September the 27th. If you'd like more information or to register, go check out our website. The Women of Westside Coffee Break is meeting on Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. here at the church. And our Young at Heart meets every second Tuesday of the month at 10.30 a.m. Youth is starting back up on September 9th. And if you are interested in joining us for our Ladies Bible Study, make sure you register at mywestside.ca. Back to Church is taking place on September the 18th. It's going to be a great event. We're going to be having a barbecue um, hosted by M&M Meats. It's going to be $5 per person. Newcomers and students eat free, so make sure you invite a friend. Now, if you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, I do encourage you to fill out the Connect card located in the live stream description. And if you'd like any information about our upcoming events, check out our website at mywestside.ca. If you would like to partner with us through your tithes and offerings, there'll be a link in there for that as well. Thanks for joining us and take care.
Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Pastor Bert and I can't believe that summer's already over. <laughs> okay, I guess technically it doesn't officially end until September 22nd. But then why do they call this Monday Labor Day? <laughs> well, because it's time to get back to work. Hit the books, make plans, fill schedules, and bring home the bacon, right? Now, we may wish that summer vacation would last forever. But without education, employment, and expendable income, we wouldn't even get to enjoy the short summers that we do have, let alone have them all year round, right? So with it actually being Labor Day weekend, and most of us probably feeling a little down about that, I thought I'd try to inspire you a little with a great quote from President Teddy Roosevelt, who said, Far and away the best prize that life offers is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. Isn't that great? Don't you feel like you can't wait to get back to work now? <laughs> no, why not? I think that most of us are always wondering if what we are doing in life matters, if it's work worth doing. But if there's one thing I've learned over the years, it's that any job can become meaningful and work worth doing if we see it as the place God has put us to shine his light and love among the people there. Jesus even said that this is what we're to do as his followers. Matthew recorded him saying it like this, let your light shine before people so they can see the good things you do and praise your Father who's in heaven. Now, I'm sure that this statement had a profound impact upon Matthew because he was a tax collector. Listen, there was and is and evermore shall be no worse job to have because everybody hates you. Yet Jesus says that his followers are to shine with his light and love, no matter what their job is. Whether you're a dentist or ditch digger, a police or politician, a taxi driver or, or tax collector. One of the most effective people I know when it came to shining God's love in his job was a cigarette salesman. When he gave his life to Jesus, he felt that he was called to bring God's light to his employers and his co-workers and his customers. And so that's what he did. So you see, it doesn't really matter what you do for employment. What matters is what you do with it. And to Jesus, the best thing you can do is use it to help people find real and eternal life in him. This was and is Jesus' top priority. And so it must be ours as those who have chosen to follow him as well. But Jesus is more than just an example for us to follow. It's he who we are called to become like. And if we're to become like him, that change needs to happen on the inside of us before it'll ever happen on the outside. If we're to do what Jesus did, we must become who he is. We must have his heart for lost people. Now, the passage from the Bible that we're going to look at today gives us a clear picture of Jesus' heart for people. If we want our life and work to be effective and meaningful and shine for him, we must allow what we learn from this passage to change our hearts, to become like his heart, so we can shine with his love to the people around us. Again, it's Matthew who recorded Jesus' words for us in Matthew 9, 35-38. He said, Jesus traveled among all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, announcing the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were troubled and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the size of the harvest is bigger than you can imagine, but there are few workers. 
Therefore plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for his harvest. As we've already seen, Jesus' heart is to save lost people. It was the reason he came to earth, and it, it's the basis for everything he did and said. And if we want our lives and work to shine with his heart, we need to see people as Jesus saw them, as spiritually lost people that were facing a godless eternity without him. So from Matthew's account, we can find four ways that Jesus saw the work of saving people. First, He saw that the measure is plentiful. In this passage, Jesus compares the scope of the work to a farmer's field that needs to be harvested. It says, Then he said to his disciples, The size of the harvest is bigger than you can imagine. The world is a big place, folks. The crowds are huge. The numbers of spiritually lost and dying people is overwhelming. In Jesus' day, it's estimated that the population of the world was approximately about 150 million people. That Today's world population grows that much in under two years. Seeing these numbers made me wonder about my home city of Lethbridge. So I searched online and found that half of the population claimed to be Christian. Half the population? How can that be? If that's so, where on earth are they on Sunday mornings? (laughs) Definitely not in the churches. Then as I started to look at some of the breakdown of the demographics, it started to make some sense. See, about half of those claiming to be Christians, reported being affiliated with Orthodox churches. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't Christians in Orthodox churches. There most definitely are. But many of these people see church affiliation as a part of their culture, rather than a commitment to following Jesus. I also discovered that the LDS and JWs were included in the Christian count as well. Whereas a closer look at their theology would probably set them outside of this demographic. So with all things considered, there are probably just around 10,000 people who would consider themselves faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Out of a population of just under 100,000 today. Now, while 10% of the population being Christian is considered high in Canada, it shows us that the harvest is still truly plentiful. That means that there is plenty of work left to do. So as Jesus followers, we need to be focused and intentional in doing our part to shine his love to the people in our lives. And that makes our second point integral for motivating us to do this, that Jesus saw the multitudes are precious. Not only were the multitudes of people vast as Jesus looked upon them, but those people brought tears to his eyes. All those people, then and now, matter to God. Make no mistake about it, folks. Jesus loves people. When Jesus saw the crowds, it says, he had compassion for them. Now, the word used for compassion here is the strongest word for pity in the Greek language. It describes the kind of love that moves a person beyond sentimental feelings to heartfelt action. People are so precious and loved by God that he took action and sent Jesus into this world to show how much he loves us. People are so valuable to Jesus that he willingly laid down his life to save them. People are so valuable that God empowers the church with his Holy Spirit to be able to tell them about him. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power to testify about me with great effect to the people in Jerusalem throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 
See, when we have Jesus' heart and see people through his eyes of love, we will feel the same compassion and place the same value upon them that God does. People are precious to him and should be to us. The third thing Jesus saw in the people is that their minds are perplexed. Jesus described the multitude as being troubled and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Now, there are two Greek words that Jesus uses to describe the people here. The first brings the understanding that they had lost hope. The struggles of life had knocked them down one too many times. The second word refers to living without purpose. They were wandering aimlessly as people without hope or purpose. He says like sheep without a shepherd. When you don't follow God's best for you, people end up following any new fad or belief or movement, even to their own destruction. So this is a good picture here that Jesus uses because sheep are dumb animals. <laughs> they simply put their head down and follow the sheep in front of them. If a guide or leader doesn't, doesn't exist, they'll simply wander, following some bug or fluff ball flying through the air until they become victims of circumstance. Do you know what Jesus' favorite term of endearment was for his followers? He called them his flock. Thus, he often called himself the good shepherd. I love how the ancient prophet Isaiah described God's care for his followers. He said, the Lord cares for his nation just as shepherds care for their flocks. He carries the lambs in his arms while gently leading the mother sheep. What a beautiful picture of how God and we too need to care for people carrying the weak, and being gentle with those carrying burdens. This is the shepherd heart of Jesus, and why he said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. People are perplexed, without hope or purpose. If there's anyone who can show them where hope and purpose are found, it's we who have found real life, real hope, and real purpose in living for Jesus. Folks, if we don't do it, nobody will. It's our job. It's our mission. So it needs to become our priority which is the final point for us today. The mission is priority. Can you feel what Jesus feels? He's compelled by his love for people as he sees the multitudes, the perplexity of their problems, and the sense of urgency in reaching them. That's why he asks his followers to pray and plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for his harvest. Herein lies one of the great truths of the Christian faith. The harvest will never be reaped unless there are laborers to bring it in. Jesus chose to use his followers, his flock, his church, to bring in the harvest. That's why we need to see people as Jesus saw them, as plentiful, precious, perplexed, and priority. And when that happens, it'll move us to action. How? Well, there's a great little saying that we have used in training our greeters and ushers. It's a look, a word, and a touch. When someone comes into the building, they make eye contact, they give a greeting, and shake their hand. It's a simple and effective way of engaging with people and making them feel welcome. And I'm thinking that maybe all of us, maybe we just need to tweak that saying a little and use it for our own witnessing. A look, a touch, and a word. Meaning that we open our eyes to see the people in our lives like God sees them. We touch their lives with his love through acts of kindness. 
and we share the good news of what Jesus has done for us and for them. You see, that's not that hard either, is it? It's a simple and effective way of shining God's love in people's lives. And if you live near Lethbridge and would like to be a part of bringing in the harvest this fall, we will be providing another Alpha course starting September 27th for those who are curious about God, Jesus, and the Bible. And if you don't live near Lethbridge, you can look uh, on their website at alpha.org and find one near you. All you have to do is pray about who God would like you to invite. Take an invitation, give it to a friend or co-worker or somebody, and invite them to come with you. Folks, it doesn't get any easier than this. Invite, bring, eat, watch, discuss, that's it. You don't have to be able to explain anything to them. You don't have to defend the Bible. It's all presented in the videos. You just have to invite and bring them along with you. I hope that your heart has been stirred to see that the harvest is work worth doing for this fall and always. You see, when we bring, pardon me, you see, when we begin to see people as Jesus saw them, it makes all the difference in the world. When we see people as Jesus saw them, it'll cause us to take responsibility, to pray, to go, and to tell people about Jesus. Truth is, we can all do more than we've been doing when it comes to bringing in the harvest of people. And perhaps you're watching today, and you actually find yourself on the other side of this conversation. Maybe you've never taken that step in your own life to follow Jesus. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus came into this world and died to pay the price for your sins, a life for life. The early church leader named Paul, in writing to the church in Rome at that time, said it like this, the payment for sin is death, but the gift that God freely gives is everlasting life found in Christ Jesus our Lord. That means that because of the sin every one of us has in our lives, we have all earned a death sentence. But Jesus provided us with the only means of escape from that sentence. His life was the payment for the sin of the whole world. All you have to do is accept what he's done for you and follow him as the leader of your life. If you're ready to do that today, I'm going to lead you in a short prayer. Just follow along with me. Dear Heavenly Father, today I confess my need of Jesus to save me. I've lived my life my own way, really without much thought at all of you or your love for me. I don't understand it all yet, God, but I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sinful and selfish life. And in this quiet moment, I humbly accept what he did for me. And ask, I ask you to lead me from this day on. Thank you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. Please help my life to shine for you, to the people that I know. Please fill me with your spirit to live each day for you as I work in your harvest field. It's in Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. Now, before the band comes back to close with some more music, if you gave your life to Jesus today, would you please let me know? You can take out your phone and use our church app. Just touch the I said yes button at the bottom of the screen and fill in your information there. Or you can fill out the connect card that's linked to this video. We'd love to connect with you and provide some resources to help you as you begin this new life with Jesus. Thanks again for watching, everyone. I hope you'll join us again next week for our back to school service. Bye for now. remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated 
The breach was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm You held me in your sight So you made a way Across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne And build it here inside There at the cross You paid the debt I owe Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life Brought me from the darkness into glorious light You took my place The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, it's recorded that he took bread and he broke it and he handed it out to those who were with him. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
So as we partake together today, we remember the Lord's death until he returns. Would you partake with me right now? Thanks. Father, we thank you for sending Jesus into this world to be our sacrifice. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for laying your life down willingly to pay the price for our sins, allowing your body to be broken for each one of us. And I thank you, Lord, that you took the punishment upon yourself that we rightly deserve. And so we give you thanks today and we remember the sacrifice you made. And we choose to follow you and worship you through our lives. It says after the meal, in the same way he took the cup. And he said, with this cup I make a new covenant with you. And this was a covenant of grace. A covenant that solely relied upon the work that he was about to do by dying for each and every one of us. It says that by his blood we are healed, we are given victory over sin and death, we are given, we're given righteousness, God's righteousness. We're given so much more that we probably have no comprehension over. But the fact of the matter is that Jesus willingly shed his blood to wash our sins away. And so as we partake of the cup together right now, let's give thanks to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, for allowing his body to be broken and his blood to be shed for you and I. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your blood, your precious blood, which was spilt on that horrible day. Lord, that you laid down your life for each one of us. But Lord, the power that was in your blood, it says, we, has the power to heal us even today. And so, Lord, I want to pray for any that are watching right now that may need your healing touch in their lives. Lord, I, pr I plead the blood of Jesus over them, the healing power of your blood to wash them completely clean of all sin, of all illness. Lord, according to your will and for your glory alone we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Oh, let's stand
today's message has touched you in any way, I do encourage you to fill out that Connect card. And don't forget to, to check our website out at mywestside.ca. Thanks again for joining us. Have a wonderful day and take care.